Hey guys, welcome to another edition of The Blue Bridge and today I'll be talking about rebuilds. I've been through a few and this is probably the worst one I've been through so far. So let's talk rebuilds. <laughs> First of all, apologies. I haven't been on for a, for a while. Um, this team isn't giving me the enthusiasm to make a lot of videos. I didn't watch the match on sub Saturday, so I I can't really comment on it for, for, from what I saw. Same old, same old. So I'll just be going over old things if I did a match review anyway. Right, so I'm talking rebuilds because I've been around a long time supporting Chelsea and I've seen a few and as I said in the um, intro, this is probably the worst one so far, but there's still time for the owners to salvage things. So let's see how they do. So anyway, um, for, I started supporting Chelsea, say mid to late seventies, and we weren't great. We weren't great, let's be honest. Um, the first time I witnessed Chelsea, I think we finished 17th or 18th, then we went, got relegated, we went down. Um, a lot of that was to do with the build, the rebuild of the, um, the East Stand, and we had to sell a lot of our players from the, you know, the FA Cup winning, the Cup Winners' Cup. A lot of those went, and they were replaced by a lot of young youth players in the side. So um, the players I remember growing up were Gary Stanley, Ray Wilkins, um, Steve Wicks, Mickey Droy, uh, some of the older players were still there. I think Ron Harris and Peter Benetti were still there, the old, the team that won the FA Cup. But it was it was a, a major um, rebuild of, of mainly young players. And the year we went down, we had to sell Ray Wilkins to Manchester United for a then club record fee, I think, of, is it 825,000, I believe, or something like that, I need to check it out. But so that's what I remember. And we languished in the old, uh, second tier it was in second tier which was used to be called the second division but now we know it as the um, championship we were there for a good three or four seasons and this is where I thought, sir, thought saw our very first rebuild and this is why I love this manager this is what a proper manager John Neal proper manager he took a side because um, when he took over sometimes I said rebuilds can be painful because Ken Bates I bought the club for one pound of, of Mears and um, he, at the time, we got to remember Chelsea's history with a sort of checkered history, um, lots of hooliganism at the time and there wasn't a lot of fans coming to Chelsea. It was depressing, not as depressing as it is at the moment, but it was bad times at Chelsea. And um, so when Bates took over, we'd nearly lost the club um, through, through Marler Estates uh, and so we were at rock bottom financially. So that's where this um, bridge, you know, this uh, this Chelsea pitch old, oldest came from um, because um, Bates did a lot of work in, in securing our, our future by um, fighting off the Marley Estates and giving Chelsea fans a stake in the pitch so that developers couldn't uh, buy the, the ground again. So anyway, um, that's off the pitch, but on the pitch, uh, he appoint, appointed a great manager in John Neal, but the first year we struggled and we nearly went down to the to the third tier of English football, which is with this third division, which is now the, uh, the, the known as the first division. We nearly got relegated. We finished 18, so we finished one place off the bottom three. So we'd have been the, in, in the third tier of, of English football. That'd have been dark days indeed. But um, the next year, this is where this manager earned his call uh, and so he brought in some good players he brought in a, the Roy of the Rovers back then from Reading and his name was Kerry Dixon David Speedy great partnership brought in a guy called Noam Speckman he brought in I think John Bumstead was already there Joe McLaughlin to partner a guy called Colin Pates um, he reverted uh, Colin Lee who was a striker he put him at right back um, he bought Joey Jones from Liverpool for to give us that added experience. Mickey Thomas, he was from Manchester United, giving us that experience as well. Um, so I say Spatman, giving us that steal in the middle of the park. Um, Pat Nevin, wing wizard. So these guys all came in and they weren't, apart from Kerry Dixon, who was a household name in the lower divisions, 
a lot of these guys weren't household names, but we had good scouting and we bought, built a team. We didn't build a big bunch of individuals. We built a team and this team were fantastic. Uh, we got us up. We won the league that season, beating the, the Newcastle, which included Kevin Keegan. And not only did we win the league, when we went up, I think we finished, we had two sixth place finishes straight away. And, and had it not been for Liverpool's hooliganism in Heisel, we'd have been playing European football. But sadly, John Neal had to go. At the time, I didn't understand why, but then I realised it was revealed because it was because of illness. And we had a guy called John Collins, or, you know, he came back, he, was he player manager for a while? Totally ruined us once again. He wasn't, he wasn't it. Um, a couple of mid-table finishes. And then we, I think he got us relegated. Uh, we brought in Bobby Campbell, but I think it was by then, it was too late, we got relegated. And then we um, went, I think the first, the only the one and only time that a team got, actually got relegated be because of a playoff system, because we didn't even finish in the bottom three. There was a playoff, we lost to Middlesbrough, went down. But the next season, we came up straight away. Um, it was pretty, that wasn't a rebuild. I wouldn't say it was a rebuild, because it was, a, it was pretty much just the, the side um, who, who, um, who uh, got us promoted last time was the, the crocs of the side or the core of the side that, that got us up the, the second time around. So this wasn't a major rebuild. And um, so uh, after we we went up, Bobby Campbell, we finished, I think, fifth, I think, or sixth. Then he decided that he wants, he was going to be um, a personal assistant to Ken Bates. So he, he stood down to take up that role. And then we brought in a guy called Ian Porterfield. Uh, we were near the top of the league challenging up until Christmas. Then we had an horrific run. Think Graham Potter last season when we had all those games without a win. 12 games, I think, we went without a win. About eight or nine without scoring a goal. So it sounds similar to what happened last season. So he he went and then once he, he, he left... Um, we bought, I think, was it David Webb came in as our interim manager? And after that, we, we this is the, the second rebuild now. The second rebuild was Glenn Hoddle. Glenn Hoddle came in as player manager. And again, it was a good rebuild. It wasn't, when I say a good rebuild, sometimes rebuilds don't have to be um, how you, you don't measure it on to the success or where you finish in the table, it's progression. And that's what I'm saying about rebuilds, the different types of rebuilds. With this one, it was more progression because we went away from being a kick and run football inside to a football inside. A guy, you know, Glenn Hoddle, anyone who used to know the way Glenn Hoddle played or managed, he liked his team to put get the ball on the ground, play proper football. So it wasn't a hoof and kick and run type of football. And I remember um, a guy who played for us by the name of um, Michael Dubra, he said he couldn't believe it because I don't know, from when he was a youth player in Chelsea growing up, he was just told, you know, you get win the ball, you tackle it. As soon as you tackle it, you just hoop, boot the ball out the field or do whatever. You don't play football and so that's what he, he was used to so um when glenn hoddle told him to come and say no 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 you play the ball out from the back you don't it's not you know just booting it up it was a big culture change for him but he adapted he adapted well and so he adapted he, people like him and frank sinclair i think people was frank sinclair before yeah frank sinclair came yeah so these guys had to adapt to a new way of, of playing football and not only that, Glenn Hoddle brought in players who can help them. And that's what I'd say with a rebuild as well. You bring in players who can help implement your style. And uh, he brought in Rude Hullet. Um, because first of all, Glenn Hoddle was there playing from the back, so the guys were learning from him. He was in the sweeper role. Brought in Rude Hullet to play that sweeper role. Then he brought in the likes of Mark Hughes came into the team. And so he was getting in um, some good players. Dennis Wise was brought in before. Dennis Wise giving us that edge, that, and then he was that, that sort of um, uh, person who ep epitomised Chelsea. Okay, he came from Wimbledon, but he came and gave us that nasty streak as well. And his influence was 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 massive. And it, we actually got to a cup final where we unfortunately got beat 4-0 by Manchester United. But we made a cup final. That's the first time in history I'd actually seen us make a cup final, me personally, make a cup final. So for me, that was progress. Although in our league finishes, we finished 11th twice, I believe. But 
I could see the progress. I could see the way that our football had been transformed. And Rudy Turnit came in. And again, I say this wasn't a rebuild because when Rudy Turnit came, he just added the final touches to what Glenn Oddle had already implemented. He brought in the likes of your Frank LaBeouf, your Roberto Di Matteo's. Um, he brought was now Mark Hughes was there from Glenn Hoddle, I think, brought Mark Hughes. Um, so he brought in Di Matteo, LaBeouf, Gus Poyer, Babiara. I think those players, and you could kind of call that a rebuild, yeah, because he did bring in some players to. To, to, to just push us on from the level that Glenn Hoddle had taken us. So I could say, yeah, let me throw that into the rebuild category as well. That one, I see FA Cup, first trophy I've ever seen us win, aesthetic. And um, some problems behind the scenes with him and the, and the chairman. So um, we had another player manager who came in, um, Gianluca Vialli, and he won us the Cup Winners' Cup, the League Cup. And we nearly won the league the season after. I'd, had it not been for Steve Guppy, I always remember that. That gives me nightmares. Um, if you know, you know, if you're an old Chelsea supporter. But um, so, again, he had it in Kasaragi, I believe, and he brought in um, Brian Laudrup. And the thing is, as Kasaragi stayed fit, had Laudrup not been homesick, we could have been looking at another league title. Or before, or a league title, sorry. And that's way before Abramovich took over. So, um, but his time was up when he started to lose the dressing room. And I think um, Hasselbank was being brought in at the time. I, I remember reading Hasselbank's autobiography about how Fiardi was losing the dressing room a bit. Good Johnson, did he come before then? Yeah. And then this is a painful rebuild because then we had Ranieri for our next rebuild. And, and what he did, again, he set the tone for what happened later with, with Jose Mourinho because he phased out your Petit, because Petit was inside at the time. He phased out Petit, he phased out Le Berth, he brought in John Terry, he brought in um, Frank Lampard. And um, so these were the future of the, of the club. So. Again, the, the reason why he he had a bit of time, although we had all that success, and the success did dry about out a bit, so we weren't winning or competing in cup competition or everything, but we didn't drop off from a cliff. So we still finished, I think, two fifth place finishes, and then we finished fourth or four seasons. Yeah, I think it was two sixth place finishes or one fifth and then fourth. And that season when we finished fourth, that's when. Um, Roman Abramovich took over and even he had a season under Abramovich where he brought in a few more players then when Mourinho came he just fine-tuned the side by bringing in your likes of your Ferreiras uh, your um, Cavaliers your Drogba's and just to give us that that winning edge and mentality so again I wouldn't put that down to a major rebuild but that was kind of a fine-tuning of the rebuilding which was done by um, Ranieri and so the next few years, I wouldn't say more of a rebuild. Probably we'll say maybe, because um, we had the core of the side, I'll say probably the next rebuild was when Jose Marino did come in actually. So that was the next rebuild, I'll say. I said it was four, but it's probably about six, because that was a bit of a rebuild because we, when you think um, a lot of the older players were phased, being phased up, but having said that, we still had a core of the team. We still had Lampard there, we still had Terry there. Drogba came back, because Drogba left in um, after the Champions League, but he came back and Marino brought him back for his experience. And that's what you do sometimes with rebuilds. You bring back a bit of experience to play alongside the younger players. Um, the rebuild wasn't started, actually started by Jose Marino, when you think about it. It was started by um, the, the, um, AVB, and he was bringing when he brought in players like Juan Mata came in and uh, Oscar came in. When that's when Chelsea were trying to go transition away from being this big, powerful side and um, into a uh, more Barcelona esque team. And you know, since, ever since then, we haven't been like this, 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 the same. But um, he, he, but what, what um, Jose Mourinho did, he brought in Cesc Fabregas, he brought in, again, a spine. Cesc Fabregas, he brought in, he brought in did, uh, Diego Costa. These are t two players who came in and instantly made us better. So I like that he analysed the team for one season. He said, this is what we need for the next season. Brought them in, instant results, and we won the league. 
Conte, again, wasn't really a rebuild. Kante was important. He brought in someone who was important to push us through. He changed the system into a five at the back. And then um, that's what gave us our, our next title. But then this rebuild now, what we're ha witnessing at the moment, everything that I mentioned before in how to do a rebuild, we haven't really done with this rebuild. We haven't kept the spine. You know, in all those other rebuilds, we, we've already, we had a spine. Dennis Wise was there, John Terry was there, people like that. And because we had that spine, it was easier to implement new players. We've ripped out the whole of the team you know in all the rebuilds i've mentioned as well not once we didn't have make wholesale changes uh, get rid of 12 players and, and and buy in 12 new players and think they're going to gel we didn't have we bought experience as well we didn't buy all younger players we bought experienced players you know if you all the way back from me look at rude hilly experience Viali experience, Diego Costa experience, Fabregas experience, all in these experienced players, done it, seen it, wore the t-shirt. So these guys were ready to, to hit the ground running. And so that's what made it work with these ones. Even when we didn't win anything for four seasons, we he was planting the seeds, sowing the seeds that we saw, we still had that, that spine and ready. So um it may, as I said, it may work because it but all depends because nowadays you need, you know, the, the patience isn't there. Are these players going to be having that winning mentality because they're still a young side? And uh, Barnett, Neil Barnett made a good point at the press conference a couple of days ago where he said 21 to 24 is when a player is a make or break for players in that in that age bracket. You're either going to make it or you're not going to make it. And if we're developing a losing mentality with these players now, it doesn't bode well for the future. So that's why I feel that this, the way that this weed build has been done, we needed that bit of experience in there. We can't just put in 11 youngsters. And I don't say 11 youngsters, because we got you know, players there. We got the, the, your Chilwells there, your Sterlings there. And, but it, the core are youngsters. Like the majority of the team are made up of youngsters, which is going to give you a lot of inconsistencies. And even the younger players who are the older players who are there, not really setting the right example. I don't think, you know, because the, the consistency isn't there from the players that you expect consistency from. So that is it, guys. Whistle stop, history tour off Chelsea and rebuild. So, what was your favourite rebuild? Is there one that I've missed out? Let's stick it in the comment section below. Do you think this rebuild is going to work or do you think it's a recipe for disaster? Again, put your comments in the section below and I'll see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like, share and I'll see you guys. Bye-bye.